Welcome to the Aerial Strategies Introduction to Aerial Systems and Platforms. This is Module 1. We're going to begin by talking about what is an unmanned aerial system or an unmanned aerial vehicle, an RPV, remotely piloted vehicle, or a drone. All of these are synonymous with an aircraft that is externally piloted, often referred to as a UAV or UAS. They're very common in both military, civilian, and industrial applications and becoming more so in autonomous types of operations. The military has been using them for surveillance, targeting, direct action, and a whole host of other applications for many, many years. They've been getting to take hold in both civilian and industrial applications, initially for things like aerial photography, some basic inspections, disaster relief, fire and rescue, agriculture, and a whole host of other applications and use cases, which we'll talk about in great detail later in our session. And finally, autonomous types of operations. There's a lot of new technologies that are advancing that allow UAVs to make decisions independent of operator inputs, allowing them to complete the task, even working in conjunction with other UAVs to meet their goal, objective, or mission profile once they've been launched. Now, let's look at a brief history of UAVs or UASs. The earliest recorded history that we've been able to uncover dates back to 1849 when balloons were used to drop bombs on Venice. As we progress to World War I, aerial torpedoes were conceived. In World War II, in that era, there was really a large-scale production of pilotless aircraft for training, both in air-to-air -air combat and ground-to-air uh, training for gunners, radars, and other combat types of situations. And as we move forward to the Cold War, Cold War era, reconnaissance, eavesdropping, jamming, and a lot of other sophisticated capabilities were put into unmanned aerial vehicles primarily to help with reconnaissance, surveillance, and other types of activities. It wasn't until the 21st century, late in probably the 80s and 90s, when there's a rapid adoption of UAVs and UASs, not just for passive types of combat support, but direct line types of support. So direct action, weaponizing these UAV platforms to go after specific targets. And we've all seen in the news over the past probably decade or better where UAVs are used for very strategic and just normal battlefield scenarios. And today, we're seeing the advent of commercialization begin in the non-DOD or governmental sectors. And a lot of people are saying probably around 2013 is when we're going to say commercialization really began. It's a very exciting time to be getting into the commercialized UAV space. It's still very early, and we're very excited about how things are looking moving forward. Thank you, and this concludes Module 1.